In a previous video, we talked about the 1964 docudrama called Culloden, about the 1746 battle of the same name. Now, while this film had, yes, many inaccuracies in terms of the material culture being portrayed, in terms of the uniforms that were worn and the orders that were given, the way people were talking and, and things like that, the drill that they were going through, as you'd expect, they didn't really get a lot of that stuff accurate. It, it's, you know, very rare that a film ever really does get those sorts of things dead on. It, even still, it did manage to capture one thing which I think was even more significant than which we talked about in the last video, it, it managed to portray warfare during the long 18th century, linear warfare, in an appropriately brutal and, shall we say, gritty, realistic fashion. Uh, you see, it, it portrayed the terror, the genuine fear in the eyes of these soldiers as they were reloading their pieces to fire against an oncoming charge. And then, of course, it portrayed in, again, gritty realism, the horror that was a melee engagement. And these are the sorts of things that we very rarely, if ever, actually see portrayed appropriately in films set during this time period. And now today I'd like to talk about another element of that same film, another element which I think that they did exceedingly well, and that being the film's portrayal of an artillery bombardment during the long 18th century. Uh, now, yes, again, if you want to get very pedantic with it, imagine that sort of thing, who would ever want to do that, uh, then yes, you'll find a lot of problems with it in terms of the, uh, you know, the exact way that it's being portrayed. But again, if you look at it in a broader sense, a more to capture a, a cultural sentiment as opposed to a, a, an exact, a scientific portrayal of precise historic events, well then I think that you will find again an exceptional portrayal of immense value to the overall narrative of 18th century history. Now as with last time, I do feel the need to offer a bit of a warning for you. Uh, this is a very visceral scene and it is, I do believe, a deeply emotional one as well. A little little bit uh, tear-wrenching in a way. Um, and if that's not the sort of thing that you want to watch right now, then, then I would recommend clicking away from the video now. Um, but that being said, uh, for those of us who do remain, uh, as with last time again, I will show you the clip in its entirety, then I will return after the fact and we can sort of unpack what we all just saw together. And finally, I ask you all to brace yourselves, for you are now to undergo an artillery bombardment in the 18th century. A cast iron ball of three pounds weight fired from open sights. This is round shot. This is what it does. Alistair McInnes, age 20, right leg severed below knee joint. Malcolm Angus Chisholm, age 24, disemboweled. Ian MacDonald, age 13, shot. 112, dazed, indecisive, Charles has moved to behind the right flank of the Jacobite lines and is now unable to see what is happening to his army. Ordered by O'Sullivan to stand in ranks six deep, the men on the Highland right make a clear and tight-packed target for the English gunners. artillery, ill-fed by a sporadic ammunition supply, ill-served by untrained amateurs, ceases fire.
rather than go frame by frame as we did last time, I want to discuss this scene more overall. See, this is not the sort of scene we've come to expect from an 18th century based film. It reminds one much more strongly of a World War I movie, with that continual rolling, like, like a drumbeat, of that artillery pounding away in the distance, and again with that deeply intimate and personal portrayal of its effects on the bodies and minds of those forced to suffer it. Now, I will admit that in a way, this portrayal is actually a little bit too intense. You see, at the real Battle of Culloden, the British army had less than 20 guns overall. It was something like 16 of them if you include the mortars. Meaning that even if every single one of these guns was firing at an incredibly efficient rate, Let's go to a real extreme and say three rounds every minute, which is normally the expected battlefield performance of just a regular old musket. Well, you would still only have a little under one round fired every second. Now, that is a very intense rate, but it's nowhere near the audible effects that we're getting in this scene. As well, with under 20 guns brought to bear against a 7,000 strong Jacobite force, you may expect that, yes, while certain elements of the rebel army might have faced the hellish, continual bombardment that's being portrayed here, well, if that was the case, most of the other elements in the line would have been entirely quiet. Or, if you were to disperse your artillery among the entire rebel line, well, you would only have one single shot hitting particular sections every couple of seconds. Certainly not the continuous hell that we have here. This is similar, yes, to how in the previous video, many individuals pointed out that the firing of the British musketry was far, far too quick. But again, when you look at the film for historical accuracy in those very specific ways, well, you will be disappointed. Instead, look at it for the overall idea being portrayed, the overall authenticity, the feeling that it evokes of the time period being portrayed. Now, yes, in relation to the artillery barrages of the First World War or, or other modern conflicts, the power of 18th century gunnery was really nothing at all. But to the people actually experiencing that 18th century gunnery, the men who were standing under those tiny three-pounder guns, well, it was one of the most terrible things conceivable to them. While at the actual Battle of Culloden, you would not have seen this degree of cannon fire to the men who were forced to stand there and watch as round after round was thrown into their lines, disemboweling and mutilating any who stood in its way. I can only imagine that it certainly would have felt as intense as this scene is portraying it. What I mean to say is that while, yes, logically, we can look at and listen to a scene like this and know that it wasn't really this bad a bombardment, emotionally speaking to the people who were experiencing it firsthand, it would have felt as terrible and horrific as all of this. What in reality was only one round fired every couple of seconds must have to those men at its receiving end felt like a continual cacophony of hell. What was likely only an occasional ball sweeping through the rebel lines must have to those men who knew at any moment the next one could have swept them away, it must have felt like an unending dance with death. And of course, this is not to say that during the broader, long 18th century that there were not battles that would have looked and felt exactly as intense as all of this. Think more towards things like the Battle of Waterloo and such, the level of cannon being brought to bear in those sorts of engagements. I say again that that is the value of this film. Despite its physical inaccuracies, it, it manages to capture an emotion of the time period that the grand majority of films are simply unable to do. I mean, even something so simple as the force, the impact, the violence of a cannon shot is so rarely displayed appropriately. Uh, look here, for example, at this scene from The Patriot. Now, inappropriate as it may be for the battle actually being portrayed in the film, look at this gun. This is a massive cannon. You can only imagine the massive amount of recoil effect that it would have if this gun were fired for real. But here, like in so many other films, the actual effect is just pitiful. Uh, boom! You see the gun fire, and it pulls back about, oh, what, a, a foot at most? And in such a calm, a, a gentle, a rolling fashion. 
Now, yes, the heavier the gun, the less the recoil, but I'd still expect something a lot more than just this gentle pulling back of the cannon. Or even worse, let's look at a film that's widely regarded as a good one, Waterloo. Ah, yes, and here we have the grand batteries of Napoleon's army. Oh, what an immense, what a power must be thrown out from these guns. Oh, oh, uh, no, no, no. As it turns out, we just get a little bit of a puff of smoke, and then the guns will lull themselves back gently a, a second or two after the gun is actually fired. It's pathetic. A pathetic portrayal of the cannon, which makes it seem like very, very weak little guns that aren't really having much of an effect at all. It's very clear nothing's actually being fired here. Not to worry, dear viewer, there's no real danger. No, 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 no. Culloden does not play with any of these such niceties. It does not rely on sheer numbers for its spectacle. It knows how to show the force of even such a small gun, the power which it packs as the final argument of kings. Again, it may even be too intense, but it is something. It actually shows in a visible and audible sense both the power that is packed in these shots. It evokes a physical response in the viewer, a one of terror and awe in its most pure sense. And in terms of the recoil, while maybe it's a little too intense, well, compare it here to these shots of a real British gun from 1796, and a one of comparable size. You can see that it's not all that far off from the reality. And to show that even a much heavier gun is still going to pack a very decent amount of recoil, we'll see here the intensity of a 10-pounder Parrot gun uh, from a later period, the American Civil War. These guns have recoil. A lot of it. Now, as if the excellent portrayal of the firing was not sufficient to solidify in our minds the power of these pieces, we are then brought to the result of this firing. To the blood, the screaming, the agony, and the sorrow. As our dispassionate announcer provides us with the names, the ages, and the fate of the killed and the mutilated, we are forced by the filmmaker to be looking directly into their eyes. We are pressed up against them. There is no escape from the visceral effect of it all. No escape from the gore and from that horrible, horrible screaming of a young boy. Just as those on an actual field of battle were forced to do the same just as they, in the reality of the situation, had no true escape. Like I said before, if you want to find a portrayal similar to this of a battlefield, well, more often than not, you have to look towards modern day portrayals, things like the First World War and the Second World War. More often than not, when we look to portrayals of early modern warfare, well, things are very, very different. An artillery round as may land in the midst of a formation of men, and there's a great big puff of smoke, and then they fall down with a bit of a grunt, uh, very cleanly, as heroic music will swell in the background, telling us how we should feel to, to commemorate the honorable, the heroic, the decorous, the clean sacrifice that these boys made for whatever cause they're fighting for. But this is not the reality. It is never so clean as all of that. We know from our portrayals that it was not that clean in the trenches of Flanders. And it was certainly never that clean on the moor of Culloden. Between 1914 and 1746, that truth has remained consistent. But it's very rare that we see it actually portrayed, actually respected, as we do see it here in the film Culloden. Thank you all so very much for watching. Of course, uh, in particular, to my ever-beneficent supporting classes on Patreon.com. Uh, it is by virtue of your support that I am able to carry on with this the work that I do. Uh, and then, of course, to you as well, my dear viewer. Uh, thank you so very much for your viewership. And of course, until the next time, I am and I shall remain your most humble and obedient of servants.